All right, good afternoon and welcome to our Wednesday afternoon edition of PCA Live 3 at 3. I'm really excited for today's show. Uh, got a phenomenal manufacturer with us today, uh, Perdomo. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, Net, met Nick and Nicholas very early on in my first TAA a few years ago and uh, have always loved their products. And so it was really fun to, to, to meet them and get to know them and just gotten to know them more and more over the years. Uh, great company. And so I'm really excited that they were able to make some time today to come on here and talk to us about their company, uh, what they have been going through right now as it uh, relates to the coronavirus, their response, what they're doing as a company, uh, their perspective on what's going on with the industry, a uh, really important company for us in terms of their support and how we approach advocacy issues, et cetera. Um, and, but also the perspective on kind of how we move forward from here as an industry is going to be really interesting to listen to. And also some really exciting stuff to talk about uh, their products. And they've got some really interesting stuff that they're going to talk about here. So I'm really excited about this because they're going to talk about some products that um, are new. And I can't wait to talk about that too. So on that note, let's bring up Nick and Nicholas from Perdomo Cigars. How are you, sir? Hey, good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you guys doing? Very good, Scott. Hey, it's great to see you guys, even if virtually. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We've been doing a lot of virtual lately. That's for sure. Yeah, and so for exactly. So for anybody that does not know, uh, I don't know who that might be, but for anybody who does not know, uh, uh, Nick Jr. Uh, as it says on, on or Nick is on the right in the blue suit, and you're looking very dapper, I might add. And to his left is his son Nicholas Perdomo. And uh, just I want to start off and and um, let you guys kind of introduce yourselves for folks that may not know that much about you. Uh, but just to give a little bit of background about Perdomo Cigars, how you got into it, and and, and kind of anything uh, you know interesting about the Perdomo Cigar history. Uh, I'm Nicholas Perdomo. I'm the uh, National Director of Sales uh, for the company. Uh, I've been, been with the business. My dad started in August of 1992, and I was born in October of 1992, and uh, I grew up in this business, and I'm proud of it. Absolutely. I'm Nick Perdomo, uh, president of Perdomo Cigars. And uh, just a quick synopsis, uh, we've been business. We've been in business like my son since, since 1992. Uh, after after serving the United States Navy, I got married. And uh, once I left the military, I was an air traffic controller here in Miami. But I always want to get in the cigar business. A lot of people know that my father and my grandfather were in the industry. And it was something I always wanted to do. And I actually started off very meagerly out of my garage. First year, I sold uh, 9,460 cigars. And to several of the PCA members out here that are listening. And uh, you have to start somewhere. And my father, when he came from Cuba, always told me that I live in the greatest country in the world. If I worked hard, I could obtain anything I want. And uh, 28 years later, we're, uh, we're still in business and, uh, and we're we continue growing. And we got a lot of people to thank for, especially the PCA members out there and also to our consumers out there that are listening. That's awesome. I love it. I always love a good, uh, sort of American business story uh, that they all start in their garages, right? Great success to start of, uh, you know, innovative people, you know, taking a risk and putting everything they have into it. And the garage is like the perfect place to start a business, right? So, you know, you're, you're up there with all the greats about taking, taking a passion of yours, turning it into something and turning it into a great company. And it all starts right there in the garage. Yeah, I've been blessed. And I have a lot of great people that work around me. Um, and, you know, you have to be as good as your family too, Scott. I mean, my, my wife was, always there with me. She could have been complaining about all the travel, never did. And my children were great about it. And just, just like Nicholas said, he's, I think he's been wanting to be in this industry since he was like uh, three days old. So we're, we're glad he's in there. He's done a phenomenal job for us. Yeah. Uh, so that's, um, I, I don't like to talk about it in, in the way that it always kind of, we do, but um, there's so much familial involvement within this industry but that is actually one of the things that I love because it underscores sort of the importance of why we do what we do here for us as PCA is, is the advocates for the industry. But that's one of the things that I, you know, walking into meeting you guys at TAA and, and just it's, it's your whole family, right? Your whole family is all in on this. And to your point, without that, I don't know if you guys are as successful as you are without your whole family kind of working as one really good machine there. Yeah, it's not easy, but Nicholas, you could you could say you grew up into it. How does it been working with family? Well, my dad, uh, you know, he demands excellence, and uh, you know, and he was it was tough at first, but I'm I'm looking back, I'm thankful, and you know, the easy road, you know, you know, you I took it was a tough road, but it was I'm blessed that you know my dad really put a lot of emphasis on on myself to make me better, 
uh, Arthur Kemper, our vice president. I call him uh, my sensei. You know, he really, <laughs> uh, you know, he really groomed me. You know, along with my father, and uh, yeah, I'm just very blessed. I always had the interest, so I mean, my heart's always been into it, and it's always something I wanted to do. And I, I can't wait for the future. The best is yet to come. Yeah, I love that sentiment, and I think what's great about this is uh, uh, just to again use a sports sort of story and metaphor here. Or, um, growing up, you always had kids' dads who would give them, you know, the start or whatever the case may be and make it easy for them. And so what's great about, you know, your dad putting you through the ringer is, Nicholas, you know you've earned it, right? This isn't something that was gift wrapped for you. You know that you had to earn this and how hard you had to work in order for your dad to go ahead and say, yeah, you're ready to go. Now you can be part of what, what I've built. And I think that's what's great about it. Yeah, and, I, and you know, I wasn't, I wasn't alongside him during the days when, you know, it was really tough during the, you know, mid 90s, early mid 90s. And, you know, he was working, you know, 16, 17 hour, 18 hour days. I mean, yeah. you know, on top of it being an air traffic controller. So I, I didn't experience that, but I, I saw a lot as a kid. So, you know, I still have a lot of memories and uh, with both my parents, you know, working their tails off. And, uh, you know, for me, you know, I, I, I live every day and I think about those early times and I thought they were, you know, I thought it was no big deal, but looking back, I go, man, my parents really struggled, and uh, to what have what we have today, and have this, you know, beautiful company, and you know, we're, we're very successful, which is a blessing. And but you know, the hard work, I I have a great memory, and I'll never forget those early days, even though I wasn't working with my dad, but I still remember, and he sacrificed a lot. And one day, when I have my children of my own, I want my dad to record a video of him and my mom talking about how they started this company because they'll never know. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the spirit that you can carry on. Right. And, and uh, you know, because your dad made those sacrifices, you know, you didn't, you know, you're not hitting a home run now because your dad did what he did in order to let you know, stand on third base at this point. Right. But now you get the opportunity to do that too. So I guess I do have one fun question on that regard, you know, for uh, your son, um, Nicholas, the fourth then is, you know, is there, where are we going with that name? Do we, do we know yet? Is it Nico? Is it something along those lines? Where are we going with that name? I might go George Foreman. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will. I will definitely throw my hat in on that one for sure. It'll be Nicholas Perdomo. Yeah. He said Nicholas. Nicholas. All right. That's that's great, right? Um, so, well, it's funny. I remember calling there just recently, and I say, uh, "I'm calling for Nick." But I make sure to emphasize junior. And they're like, well, Nick or Nicholas? And I was like, okay, Nick. And just make sure that sometimes we're worrying about distinguishing, making sure you get to the right uh, place. Um, so building off of the, you know, you coming up in the industry now, uh, Nicholas, uh, we, we've got a story that, you know, we're doing on you. And unfortunately, because of the timing of the trade show now and everything else, the issue will be coming out a little bit later. But I uh, just kind of want to talk about congratulations uh, on this new position that you've uh, earned there. Talk about what your new position is and kind of what that means for you and for the company. Sure. So um, I'm the national director of sales and uh, I have a sales team out on the road. I have about 14 guys uh, in-house. And then I also have uh, three in-house salesmen who make phone calls out of our out of our uh, offices here in Miami. Um, and so total of 17 salesmen. Um, so I work directly with each one of them. You know, we work on strategic stuff such as merchandising, uh, you know, case by case scenarios on certain accounts. You know, how we can make a uh, business, you know, how we can make our business partners more successful through mer things like merchandising, uh, you know, through newer product lines and how we're able to just be as efficient as possible and really provide the best service possible. And, you know, I've, I miss going on the road. I haven't been on the road since March, since all this happened with, with COVID. And I, I really miss it. I can't wait to see our business partners. I really miss them. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, so congratulations, well deserved, and, and I know that you're a fantastic asset there. Uh, real quick, I, I forgot to do this, so I apologize. Uh, but a comment over here reminded me of it, where uh, Carl here says that he's enjoying his 20th anniversary. I just pointing out here that that's exactly what I'm smoking right now is Perdomo 20th anniversary. This was a Christmas gift given to me. I got a good group of uh, friends that are cigar smokers, and we do a cigar exchange every year at Christmas. And so this was my uh, one from the cigar exchange. And so, uh, gentlemen, you want to talk real quick about what you're smoking too? Well, I'm smoking what you and Carl are smoking. I'm smoking a 20th okay. anniversary Sun Grown Epic here. Thanks, Carl. So, uh, this is our Perdomo Habano Bourbon Barrel Aged Sun Grown, uh, six by sixty Gordo, all six year old Nicaraguan tobaccos wrapper filler binder barrel aged wrappers for ten months. Um, 
10 months and uh, it's just a really great cigar. Yeah, that sounds delicious. <laughs> uh, good, thanks. Um, so one of the things you just mentioned, you talked about merchandising and I remarked this when we first came in before we broadcast live and how beautiful that space is there. Um, and I know that you have really, and you talked to me about this too, how much you have invested and focused on merchandising and how important that is. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your investment in that, what you do with retailers when they come in there and, and that whole program and, and how you built it and, and why you believe it's been so effective for you? Nine years ago, we came out with the, uh, the new revamped Perdomo uh, Habano bourbon barrel age with the new packaging. We wanted, we studied this with Google and a couple other companies and we worked uh, we really looked at companies like Procter and Gamble and Kimberly Clark. McCormick was one of the ones. Coca Cola. We started seeing certain things that they did, and we started seeing that we can emulate them. And one of the things that we noticed when we went in to see our our PCA partners across across the country was was the turnover of product. And one of the things that we noticed is it depended not only on shelf space but the proper merchandising of the product. So nine years ago, we decided that we would have so many facings of our brands to be put on every shelf. 63% of our retailers said yes. 37% told us not to tell them how to run their business, which is not what I want to do. I want them to be successful. We've been in business for 28 years for a reason, and we all learn from each other. I certainly learned from our PCA partners also, but I had this great, I had this idea that I thought would really work. The 63% who did it, Instead of our business declining by not having 37% of our, our retailers following the merchandising plan, we actually grew our business by 114%, which wow. solidified what we were doing. And the retailers across the country started seeing it. And the guys that really are open-minded to change have seen their businesses grow exponentially with Perdomo. Other companies are doing it now, and I don't begrudge them. It's not copying. I didn't invent it. It was done by billion dollar companies. And one of the things I noticed in the cigar industry when I first started, my dad was a business guy, was how a lot of the stores were placed. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to make the ease of shopping for our consumers. And we wanted to make the ease of selling to our retailers. Hence why we came up with this merchandising plan. And in nine years, we've grown our business by to over 217%. And now we have six brand marks with three wrappers, with five SKUs of each almost 150 SKUs, where 78% of our retailers carry at least 36 facings of our brands, which is pretty unprecedented. And one of the great things about it is our retailers are being real successful, Nicholas. And yeah, that's great. So, you know, going back, you know, we, we look at all those different companies, especially in the grocery stores, you know, we want, you know, the whole thing is to make it as easy as possible, uh, you know, especially for our consumers. Uh, you, know, you go into a humidor, the shelves are brown, cigars are brown, boxes are brown, especially with, you know, how we package our cigars, you know, the printing, you know, we use Fried Dag out of Holland. You know, we're, we really want to emphasize our merchandising and make it as simple as possible for the consumer to, to be able to buy within the retail stores. If it's set up properly, if it's merchandised properly and things are done the right way, you know, it'll lead to more turns and it'll help our, our customers, that our retailers. Yeah. Yeah. It looks outstanding. And, and, uh, I can attest to the fact that uh, you very much practice what you preach because your booth on the show floor is remarkable. And it's, and when you walk in, it's, it's stunning. I mean, it looks like you're walking in and you feel like you've walked into this beautiful lounge and the way that everything is set up, the, the meticulous attention to detail, how it's presented, it's just beautiful. You guys do a phenomenal job. And it, it really is one of the uh, sort of keystone properties that is there on the show floor for sure. Thank you. And especially in these times, what's going on, we, we're trying to help our our retailers all across the country. You know, everybody knows that when S-Chip came in, we were the company that absorbed the S-Chip tax completely, being a vertically integrated manufacturer. Also, we passed on the savings not only to our retailers, but to all our consumers out there. And together with proper merchandising, it's how we've grown our, our company so exponentially, even during these these tough times that we've had. And throughout some of the lean years in the 2008s and 2009s, where the company continued growing by following the rules and, and also our sales team doing a, a wonderful job uh, by teaching and training and really going out there working the events and the shoe leather that we put out there, you know, Prior to the last two months, our company does over 500 events, and they're very effective. 
And the reason we do them is not only to bring the, our love and our passion for Domo cigars to our consumers, but also to our retailers. So they value our hard work. They value our partnership. They value our customer service. They value that we ship 99.79% complete. Retailers, especially today with their rents and their, their indirects and directs that continue going up and up, need to have products to sell. If you're yeah. not, if you can't get products, why are you in business? I mean, and the consumer needs to smoke the products. And uh, the brick and mortars are really at our attention right now, Scott. I mean, it's 87.9% it's of our business. I started out of a garage. The retailers are the ones who really took us to the dance. And if you look at our majority between brick and mortar and, and catalog sales, the overwhelmingly 8.7 8 out of every 10 cigars we sell go to brick and mortar stores. And uh, it's important to us. And that's why we've been proud PCA members and we've been members for 26 years. And uh, we want to make sure that our brick and mortar guys stay alive, especially during these tough times. And I think that we've stepped up to the plate. Yeah, I did want to talk, first of all, how how are you as a, as a company doing right now amidst all of this? And, and how has this affected you guys? I mean, we're, you know, Scott, we're very blessed. And, uh, you know, we've, you know, going back to 2009, you know, with S-Chip, you know, we, we, we did our best to, to help our retailers, uh, you know, during that whole situation. And, you know, the last month we've given, uh, you know, record uh, promotions to help relieve our our retail partners through all this uh, so they can make extra money. And uh, it's tough. You know, we're trying to do everything we can. You know, I have my salesman, uh, our salesman, uh, you know, going to stores, you know, guys who are doing curbside. I tell them, hey, you know, go to, the, go to these stores, see if they need a hand, give them a hand selling cigars, whatever you got to do. You know, these are our guys. These are the guys who, you know, help us every night. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, at this point, we all have to come together um, and we just have to help us help as much as possible. We've had, we've even had salesmen have gone out to help them deliver cigars because some of them are mom and pop joints that don't even, they have to stay at their stores. And right. We've had, yeah. You know, training, um, we're, we're big into that right now because listen, there's been two months, some of them haven't been open and we're trying, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to help them. And look, it's like we were talking earlier, you know, our retailers out there have supported us from a kid who started out of a garage when he was in diapers to this day. And I feel that the loyalty has to be paid back. And uh, I'm proud of, of what we've done. I'm proud of what our salesmen have done. I'm proud of the leadership, of the guy right to the right of me and what he's done and some of the great ideas he's come up with to assist our retailers. And I look, I'm, I'm the I'm the model optimist. I see the glass half full. We're America. We're strong. We're going to come back and we're going to be better for this, I think. Our retailers are, are, are going to get back. I think a lot of them are, are really starting to hand sell cigars a lot more. And yeah. really, fine. we all get in the rut sometimes. And uh, it's not on automatic pilot. I think they've seen that. And I think we're all going to be better for it. And that's what I'm hoping for. So that transitions very well to my next, the, the next question I had is, um, I, I'm, I'm like you, um, a blessed and cursed with this eternal optimism. Uh, what just for your perspective, not only right now, but kind of where the industry is going from here, uh, all things considered, right? I know that we've got this this fight, and we can talk about the the legislative fight that we we are confronting. But just in terms of rebounding uh, after this, and kind of where the industry is going from your perspective, I'm really curious to just to kind of find out your thoughts, both both of you, on uh, what the industry is facing now, and maybe some of the changes it might go through. But where we end up coming out on the uh, other side of this. Um, and the potential for the industry out the other side of this? Well, I, I had a salesman who worked for me out in Dallas, Texas, and he was with General Cigar from the 60s. And I remember when he started, he, uh, his, his head of sales said, kid, I hope you enjoy it because it's not going to last long with all the regulations and everything. And 40 years later, we're still in the cigar industry, and I think that's what keeps me optimistic and being an American, it does. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we never closed, Scott, either here in Miami. We took a vote. We told our workers that we'll pay you regardless. If you feel more comfortable uh, staying at home, we'll pay you. We did, we did that even with our workforce in Nicaragua. Um, thank God, Nicaragua, we really haven't had any bouts of much coronavirus at all. Yeah. And our workers decided we implemented things that the government told us and requested us to do, and not only here in the United States, but in Nicaragua for safety. I was all for it. And uh, 
we shipped a container every single week in March and April, and uh, we, we, we had some great numbers, and, and I attribute that to our workforce, which is really my greatest asset. And what we have to do is we have to keep fighting along, and we're seeing in May now the retailers are starting to order more and more and more because, you know, it's like a shrinking vial. You open up, you know what I mean? A flower opens up eventually and blooms, and I think people – they're excited that they're going back to work, that, that things are going to get better because they got to get better. They can't be any worse if you have a store that's closed. Right. And, uh, and I just, I'm like you, I just see optimism going on there. The, the regulations are, are a big problem. We got that from the last administration. I'm really happy with the president saying today that his main goal, he, he, he put a, he wrote his pen to paper today saying he wants to, to really start turning over all these regulations it's what I read from him today. Yeah. And uh, I think I think us as PCA members should start fighting with that with our, our local members of Congress and Senate. And one of the things is just remember who you vote for and see where all the problems we've had here. And really look for the guys that are pro-business right now because what, what they've done, it's real easy for a politician to keep saying to close down and don't open your business. To me, everybody's essential. I don't care what you sell. Agreed. It's your livelihood for you and your family. You're essential. I don't think many of them are very essential. I don't think Nancy Pelosi is very essential, to be quite honest with you. And it's very, it's very easy that she can show you her $21,000 refrigerator full of ice cream while people are struggling. It's very easy to tell people out there that they can't work and not collect a paycheck because they're collecting one. Why don't we stop all the paychecks to Congress and Senate and all these governors in some of these states and mayors who, who, who are basically just – just pushing down on our lives. You know, my family left from Cuba for a reason because we didn't want the government to tell us what to do and be on top of us and take away our personal freedoms. Um, I'm not, certainly not a doctor, but I see the punishment that's been going on in business. I have a guy that works for me. He's a, he works in our shipping department. He goes to church with a friend of his who has a small engine machine shop. He hasn't collected a paycheck in two months. He committed suicide last week. Oh my God, are you kidding? These are the things that you don't hear about, and these are the sad things, and people are, are really struggling. There's a tremendous amount of depression, domestic violence, yeah. alcohol, and so on and so on, and you never hear the news talking about that, and that'll outweigh 10 times the deaths that we've had. I don't want anybody to die from anything of this, but remember, 8,800 Americans die every single day. We have 339 million people. Um, it's sad. I don't want anybody to die. I, I feel sorry for everybody, but I think, you know, we have to look at the, at the scheme of things and look and see what we're, where most of these things coming from and maybe, you know, attribute, you know, take care of that in those particular states. Maybe look at some of the elderly. My mother's 85 years old. I know she doesn't have the same immunities that Nicholas has or I might have. Um, you know, we have to use a little bit of common sense, but to shut down a country at 100% during these times to me is a, a little overboard. And it's something that it's going to take time to fix, but I think one of the one of the industries that's going to fix itself the quickest is cigars because these are celebratory. They burn people. People want them. They enjoy them, and people need more good news today. And I think that's why cigar sales are going to continue growing. Believe it or not, and we're going to make sure they are because we're going to make sure that we ship our retailers and what they need. Yeah, outstanding. Uh, just to kind of put an exclamation point on that, you know, to your point, um, when you do. When you make decisions based upon the best information that's available as possible as opposed to reactionary, and you can look at the difference between your governor there, or Governor DeSantis, and his approach. There's a, there is isn't a large elderly population in Florida, obviously, because a lot of them choose to retire down there. Um, when you look at the stark differences between how Florida and the governor there approached the situation versus other governors and, for example, New York, the, the, the differences in how they mitigated it are showing results, right? And there's no need for, and to your point, that, that's that's always the challenge of public policy. And one particular section of experts does not dictate an entire public policy decision. And this is kind of, this is always sort of my soapbox when it comes to lobbying, right? People like to, to uh, absolutely deride lobbyists and think that they're all evil and that it's just pay to play. I wish it was that simple, quite honestly, because it would be easier for us. But the role that lobbyists tr truly fulfill here is this education component, because you think about how many policymakers that exist, not even just elected officials, but those in administration, the bureaucrats, a lot of them, most of them actually, they have no idea about anything that has to do with premium cigars. So for them to write any kind of public policy, 
that impacts premium cigars, they have no idea about the industry or how to even write a public policy. So they're going to write policies that have thousands upon thousands of unintended consequences. And so that's what we really try to look at here is that when you're making these policies, there's all kinds of unintended consequences that come from those. And to your point, and you just underscored it, the suicides, the depressions, the mental health issues, there are far reaching implications for what is happening beyond uh, this virus, far beyond this virus. And I don't know if that has been taken into consideration at the largest of scales when looking at the totality of what is happening right now and the policies that people are advocating and putting into place as a result of that. And that's, the, that's, that's been the most frustrating thing for me is just that lack of understanding of, yes, you can have epidemiologists and experts in, in viruses, but that does not make them an expert on what they're advocating for and how that actually impacts things and, and ripples across economies and, and the social construct in so many other areas. And so that's, I, I agree a hundred percent that, that and that's another reason why I'm optimistic is that you've seen the explosion of these types of online things with zoom meetings and everything else, because so many people are just craving social and human interaction. And for me, there really is no better place for good human interaction than in your favorite cigar lounge, smoking your favorite cigar, drinking your favorite drink and having a good time with people like that. And I truly believe that there's going to be a great flow to those places as soon as we can open up. I think people, I, I said this before, they don't realize what they had until it, now it's gone. And now I think people are really craving that through these lounges and places they can get back out to. So that's why I'm so optimistic that coming out of this, I think more connection and this more creative services that all retailers have been coming up with, I think that's just going to continue. So I'm really looking forward to the lemonade being made out of all of these lemons. You, you hit it spot on. We're, we're excited. Jeff Godfrey, one of our sales reps in, in Tennessee, just called and said that uh, he's doing a, a large event in, in the Nashville area uh, with uh, with a great customer. We have Michael Muir at Liquid Smoke, who's another PCA member, longstanding yeah. PCA member. And, and uh, we're excited about it. You know what I mean? And, and we're starting to see people people coming coming together and and uh listen we pray every day for our retail shops around there they uh they put they put my kid through college okay? <laughs> they put food on our table and i've made many many a friend my whole family with a, with a lot of guys out there that are that are pca members that are that i really affect their business acumen and so on and uh i agree with you 100 percent and i mean you could talk we're, we're, we're adding sales people we're adding customer service we're we're investing. You know, when the trade show came two years ago, we built a new booth. People said, why would you do that? We we want to put our, our, our best foot forward, and we really have to believe in what we do. And you just can't put your toe in the in the, in the pool. You got to you gotta jump in sometime, and, and you got to believe. And I have a lot of faith. You could talk about how we're expanding our sales team and everything. Yeah, we're looking at, you know, the whole thing is, is how can we help our retailer in terms of, you know, having our salesmen be there more often, you know, uh, how we can cut some of these eight week rotations down to six, down to four, you know, where it makes sense, you know, for the company and for the salesman in terms of numbers and things like that. But, you know, that's the whole thing is how can we provide, we're trying to be as efficient as possible and how can we provide better service to our partners at the end of the day? And, and that's, that's really just it. And we're providing for our consumers out there too, because they're excited. They go into their stores and they can buy any Perdomo product they want. And it turns the cash registers for our retailers. And that's what they need now more than ever. Like I said earlier, rents never go down. Salaries never right. go down. Exactly. And they're under, they're under deep struggle right now. You know what I mean? And uh, it's not, you know, the restaurant that I could go on. We all know, <clears throat> excuse me, the bad news of what's happening. We got to turn around. We got to turn around quickly. Yeah. Yeah. We need to go to Florida, open up our beaches down here in Miami also and uh, and open up our gyms. You know, yeah. we, they force us to walk on three foot sidewalks and ask us to do social distancing, but they close our beaches that are 120 yards wide that nobody could even come within six feet for the most part, right. especially at the time of the year because we're in the summer and most of the people have gone back home. So sometimes I scratch my head with, with our politicians sometimes, as we all do. Yeah, that's that, that, that goes right back to my point as far as making public policy. Sometimes it doesn't make any sense because you understand. And the more and more you work with with elected officials, you understand how the anatomy of this, these decisions get made and you just kind of roll your eyes. But to your point, 
there's no better social distancing activity than going to the beach because I don't want people next to me at the beach. I want to be able to go out. You're outside and you're away from people as opposed to being – God, Home Depot is right next to my house, and I can't even begin to tell you how packed it is there. And Costco and Walmart and Sam's Club. I can get way more distance between myself and strangers at the beach than I could at any of those places. And they are packed, man. They are doing, they are making money hand over fist at those places. And it's, well, it's I, like, I like all the businesses to be able to say the same thing. It's like I said exactly. earlier, and I know you believe in it too, Scott, but every everybody out there is, is is essential. I hate this thing that they're not essential businesses. Um, everybody's essential when they're trying to make a living, in my opinion. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Uh, two two real quick things. Um, hit comments are on Facebook. They're coming in so fast and furious. Um, and I, I knew this was going to happen because you are so popular. But I do want to give a, a quick nod to Angela. You and Lord Puffers, a great retailer and a, a very good supporter of of PCA, um, and say hi to Angela. And I know that she's a very big supporter of of Perdomo as well and does a lot with you guys. Um, and then um, there was another thing that came in through here. I got to find. The comment here. Oh, it was Eric um, saying, "Nick, you're great in hand rolled." And uh, there was one comment there that 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 I remember from you explicitly in this, um, where you talk about it and you say, "Look, at the end of the day, look, I'm a free market capitalist, and ultimately, I just want to go, you know, be able to run my business in the best way possible and compete in the best way possible." And I'm paraphrasing, but that line, "Look, I'm a free market capitalist," is exactly what you say in there. That underscores this. And, and that's one of the reasons why I think I love the cigar industry is because that that Cuban spirit that that it's born out of just underscores that that spirit that you're carrying forward here of of I am going to go out and I'm going to put my heart and soul into something and I'm going to compete my you know what off in order to make sure that this is as successful as possible and make the best possible product as possible. And that's one of the reasons I think that that the premium cigar industry exemplifies that across the board. And that's why I love it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I agree with you hundred percent. If my father was alive today, he wouldn't miss one day of work. And I had, I had such a great example of him uh, all, all through my time in elementary and junior high school. My dad worked two or three jobs and always put food on the table. And we moved to Florida, he became one of the biggest general contractors and he was successful and he was just, he was brilliant with a third grade education. And uh, I just looked up to him. He was my hero. And him and my mother were just incredible examples. You can imagine my mother's 85. And she said to me a couple of weeks ago, she said, if I sit home alone here with just some visits, I'm, I'm literally going to die. How long do I have to left to live? I want to come to work. And uh, she's been coming to work twice a week now, three times a week. And it's her choice. And that's what it should be her choice. And, and I'm proud of it. I, I felt bad. I've never told anybody this, but she tried to give me her paycheck the day before yesterday and said, you know, I've been out for two months. I, I never earned a penny of this money. I want to give it back. I said, mommy, you've got to be kidding me. I said, you're my mother of one, two. I've been paying all my workers, regardless yeah. a lot of them working from home. They probably work 40% of what they normally do when they're out on the road. And this is something that's an aberration that came up. It's certainly not nobody's fault. I'm proud of you. The reason I have this business is because of what I learned from you. So please, you know, but it shows you the spirit of that cloth that we might never duplicate again. And the examples that we got as children, I'm sure you could probably say the same thing about your family from hearing you talk. I'm sure we have a lot of similarities with that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my wife started a business and she opened her doors on March 1st this year. So we, uh, she's been having a, uh, a tremendous time. Fortunately, uh, you know, some good people around her, the landlords have been super, super supportive and, and helpful there, but same kind of thing, you know, um, and it's, it's really weird here in Northern Virginia where her business is at because just one county over, they're opening things up. But then in our county, because of kind of the way it's configured, even though we're closer to the other county than we are closer to D.C., she can't open up. And so she's having to completely revise her business model to more shipping and online. It's, it's an experiential retail. So now she's had to completely scrap that business model and move to a different one. Um, but she's great. And, you know, she's brilliant. And I wanted to point this out though. And I love this part about your, what you just said about your dad, brilliant with a third grade education. To me, that underscores the complete disparity. There's a difference between education and learning, right? You know, formal education and learning. And that's not to say that formal education isn't necessary, but it doesn't necessarily just because you get a formal education doesn't mean you have learned what that education was for. And I think your your story about your dad underscores that that really, if you're willing to learn, there's opportunities that exist, 
and it goes right back to your your comment free market capitalist if you're willing to learn you're willing to put in and pay your dues and, and do what you need to do then there's every opportunity out there for you to grab success and make it yours no doubt no doubt you can talk about college and business and what you've learned from here versus college yeah i mean i'm, I'm glad i went through college but my dad's the greatest professor and my mom are the greatest professors yeah exactly there was nobody that I ever went to school with, whether it was a professor or a student that could even remotely touch my mom and my dad or my grand my grandparents, not because they're family, but just it's a fact, you know, but it's, uh, yeah, we need to kind of go back to the old school ways a little bit, you know, uh, yeah. we're an entitled society and I get into, I really don't want to get into, but you know, it's, uh, <laughs> I think guys like my dad and my grandfather who didn't go to college and, you know, they they worked with their with their backs and but you know what they use their heads too and and uh, you can't touch them. Yeah, uh, totally. Um, you know, I, I did business school and I learned a lot there. And I think that one of the things that it it helped me learn is there's access to different pipelines of information and networks through business school, which I think is more of the important stuff you get out of it as opposed to the book learning. Um, and a lot more of it was applicable hands-on almost apprenticeship type of stuff that you can do in order to learn from you know great folks like your dad that have built stuff and you can you figure out ways there through ex experiential things as opposed to just having to go through and read books and pass a, a you know i check the box here and make sure i pass this test here um so there there are various ways to, to kind of capitalize on that i, I did want to get to some questions here um the, the this one kind of wraps up the conversation we've been having about covid but um, Juan Jimenez asks, has have COVID's affected any sort of the, the production down in Nicaragua or a crop or anything like that? Uh, no, sir. I mean, to be honest with you, we had a, a phenomenal crop. We just finished up. Uh, we'll, we'll finish up the crop the next Tuesday, and we've had a bumper crop. Our, our 100% of our workforce has been working. We actually opened up a, a small factory about 18 months ago. Um, that we're adding on to production, which we've been blessed enough to be able to do. Thank God all our workforce, not only here in Miami and here in the United States, but also in Nicaragua, have been 100% healthy. Um, and we haven't slowed down one bit. Matter of fact, we've we've actually grown and we've been blessed by that. And I want to thank every one of you for that and your patronage on our products, because that's the truth. And uh, things have been good. I almost feel guilty about saying it, but I, I think things are going to be better. And I think there things are going to be better for every one of us with this. And hopefully it, it starts out sooner than later, but that's a great question. Yeah. And Angela, you, if, if everybody merchandised and was a retailer like Angela, you, we, we could never produce enough cigars. She's a fantastic retailer, even she though she's right. from the people's Republic of California. If she, was, <laughs> if she was in Florida or Texas or Alabama, it'd be scary what she could do. She's handcuffed to the, to the gills out there and uh, she still does a wonderful job yeah i've always said you know uh for the success that uh, a lot of our california retailers have in california i i am floored by it because i i don't know how i mean it kind of makes my skin crawl to think about all that they have to go through and the the just the vehement vitriol that smoking gets in the entire state of california well there's some pockets you know in, in some places um you know in, the, in some of the other areas that are better towards it but yeah, I, that's a hundred percent. And so hopefully, you know, I know that they're opening up a new location that's in Tampa that's going to be coming up here. So can't wait to see that one. I want to transition now to the really, really fun part of the conversation I want to get to. And that's about product lines and new products and, and stuff that you're excited about. And there's one question here that will lead into that from, um, from Randy Russell, who asks what the most popular line of Perdomo cigars is. Now that's a loaded question because I know it can vary by region, but just kind of wanted to get your take on, on what are some of the, the, the more popular brands uh, and then I want to follow that up with another question here in a second about that. But if you kind of want to talk about it, you know, from both of your perspectives, some of the more popular brands that you all sell or lines, they're not brands. You are the brand. Sorry. Well, our, our top line, you know, it's our Coca-Cola. It's our Perdomo Reserve 10th anniversary champagne. Uh, that's the cigar that put me through college. And, uh, you know, that's that's what really built our company. Um, I don't know if you can see that through my the, the, the cellophane there, but I had that as my second cigar for the, for today. That's the that's a, that one right there. It's that's like, been a good one, us. It's iconic, yeah. and it's uh, you know it's uh, six year old we use six year old Ecuadorian wrappers, Connecticut wrappers, the six year old Nicaraguan filler tobaccos. We barrel aged those wrappers for an additional eight months. It's uh, just really just some of the best of the best that Perdomo has to offer. That's our number one. That's our biggest brand. Yeah, and uh, that's a brand that's been out and celebrating its 19th year. One of the things that we're blessed about is 
if you look at our brands like Perdomo uh, Champagne, Perdomo Reserve Champagne, uh, Perdomo Habano, um, Perdomo Lot 23, Perdomo Fresco, I could go on and on. Our youngest brand is our Perdomo 20th anniversary, which is now going, it's going into its ninth year. Um, if you look at the, the three, four brands I just mentioned prior, those brands have been in existence over 17 years. And one of the things that we strategically try to do, and Nichols was kind of mentioned earlier, is we don't want to throw anything against the wall. What we want to do is it's not about what's new. It's about what sells and what continues selling. I was just in a retail store in South Miami prior to all this with a friend of mine. I was sitting in a lounge and a guy recognized me and he said, I've been smoking your cigars for 20 years. I said, thank you very much. He says, is there anything you can recommend? There was a big wall of Perdomo cigars at Sabor Havana down in South Miami. And I said, have you ever smoked a Perdomo Reserve Champagne? He said, no, I haven't. And I said, well, good, that's new to you. And I said, that's a pretty, pretty interesting cigar. We've sold over 50 million of them since it's, a, it's existence. So it's a time and proven brand. I don't ever want to buy the brand new car model. And this is a brand that, that's been very successful and millions of smokers have enjoyed it year after year. Give it a shot. And he, he loved the cigar. And I think our retailers out there are always trying to look at, at new. I think they need to look at the portfolios and not everybody has smoked every line of our cigars. Even if you have two or three of our brands, not everybody smoked them. And you could say that for any brand. So there's always something new that works for the consumer. And I think the retailers are starting to see that now and are starting to see that, Hey, we need Coca-Cola, Diet Coke and Sprite, strawberry flavored Fanta, maybe not so much anymore. And they need to have staples that are time and proven and we've been seeing that in the last three to four years, especially. And, um, you know, we're proud of that, that we've, we've had such longevity of our brands, but that's consistency being vertically integrated, you know, growing our own tobacco, curing and fermenting. And we'd love for you, Scott, to come down and see the experience on the Perdomo factory tour next January and February. I'd love for I'm you. There. To I'm there. <laughs> I think you'd really enjoy it. We do everything. We mill our own wood. We make our own staples. We uh, pelletize our, our own seeds. We have our own meteorological. Set. We have everything that you can see there. And the, and the hundreds of retailers have been down there through the years. Will, will echo it. It's, a, it's an educational thing, and it really shows our pride and passion. But we've been blessed with, with a lot of these brands. And the, uh, the new estate selection, vintage box press uh, cigar has been super. It's only in 133 stores. We're going to add 25 more PCA members uh, coming up now uh, this summer. And uh, we do have two new lines. We don't really come out with many new lines, and people ask us why. Uh, maybe I'm not smart enough. I just it takes me years to really come up with something that we can really lock it in. And we have our circle of trust where we we get together and and we look at the stuff. And I always say that when people talk about cigar ratings, I think the toughest cigar ratings are at Perdomo Cigars, where we have over 350 years of smoking experience, and there's there's several of us that are that are that are real smokers that we really, when we come to launch a brand, it takes us quite a while because we kind of got to be in unison, even if it's not our particular favorite cigar, maybe it's a favorite cigar for maybe one of you guys out there, it's a smoking subjective. And uh, today we, this is the first people see it. This is a new Perdomo Reserve 10th anniversary box press Maduro that comes in a blue. I don't know if I can see that, but I'll come closer to you right there where you can, you can see it. Oh, and this beautiful. is the first time we've used blue. It's a royal blue with a little bit of metal flake. And Nicholas, you can show them the new uh, Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary Box Press Sun Grown with the traditional red band that we came up with in the latter part of the 90s. And this is a brand that's very special because it's a little bit outside of the wheelhouse that Perdomo does. Full flavored, rich and smooth. But we've taken a lot of input from, from consumers out there, and people are asking for a little more natural sweetness from the tobacco cord, and where we get that is at the Jalapa Valley. We've added more tobaccos from a lot of our great farms up in the Jalapa Valley. Um, during the tour this year, we had, we had, I think, 230 retailers and consumers test this particular cigar. I gave them out in wheels and said, just try this. It doesn't have a band. I just want, want to get your input on it, what you think. And it was overwhelmingly, wow, this is unbelievable. And this is the brand. We wanted to actually come out with this brand in February, but of course what happened, and on top of it, our friends and our partners at Vrydag and Holland got a little bit behind with the powdered golds that we use in these particular uh, uh, in, this, in this particular packaging, also in the hologram effect. And um, 
we're gonna we're gonna we wanted to bring this out in the trade show. Totally understandable what happened with the trade show this year. So we're we're actually going to bring these out in the latter part of July. The packaging is being shipped to us as we speak. So we're really proud of this, and a lot of you guys are going to be able to smoke this in the latter part of the summer. We think this is going to be a big winner. It's going to corrugate together with our Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary Champagne line. A little bit of a different cigar. I think people are really going to enjoy it, and I know that. The, 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 a lot of the PCA retailers are going to get on this brand. And it's going to be another portion of their portfolio of Perdomo cigars that they're going to be able to pay those direct and indirect uh, expenses that they have and, and, and so on. And it's going to be a brand that's going to be another workhorse from them for Perdomo. And we're really excited about it. That's amazing. So is that the first time that, that kind of anybody in the public has seen that, that new band and the new cigar? Absolutely. Hey, I listen. Thank you. <laughs> hey, let's let's show it to the PCA guys. We, I told Arthur, I said let's pull these out. He said no. I said well, we're doing the show for PCA, man. These are our these are our customers out here, and our consumers are going to be out here. Let's show it to them. And when you see the box and everything, it's phenomenal. It's just beautiful presentation. People ask me why do we make our boxes so ornate and beautiful. The cigars have to perform, and they have to be outstanding. I think the box should be too. I think the consumer deserves that. I remember when I bought my first box of cigars, I studied it and looked at it for an hour. My wife thought I was out of my mind, but I spent $110 on that box of cigars back in those days. And that was a lot of money for me. And I thought a box of cigars was special. And I remember the guy that sold it to me. He was in a suit and tie and he romanced his cigar. I think saliva was rolling off my cheeks when I wrote down my lips when he was done. He really enticed me, you know, and I, I missed those days of that phenomenal hand selling. And I, we have a lot of our retailers. They're still incredible salespeople, but it's been a lost art for a lot of people. It's not what's free and what the deal is. It's what's special. And, you know, a lot of these cigars are given away for, for weddings and, and birthdays and all celebratory things. And I think when you hand over a box of cigars to a loved one or a friend, that it should be beautiful and special. And I got one of the greatest things that, that happened to me. I Prior to all this, I, I was on the road working in a store and a guy came up to me and he said, Nick, I'm buying a box of Perdomo Reserve Champagne, and I'm going to tell you how special it is. And I said, what's that? He said, I bought the first box of those for my son's second birthday, and I just, I, it was engraved, happy second birthday, and I wanted to give it to him and just give him something from remembrance when he was a baby. And today, this box I'm buying for is for his engagement because he's going to get married. And those are the things you're most proud of. When you see the longevity and the consistency of a brand, not just throwing some up against the wall and saying it's new. We have so many great brands out there from our members who are manufacturers that are consistent year in and year out. And those are the things that, that all of us as manufacturers have to be so proud of. And it puts a lump in my throat sometimes because this is a kid who you know grew up, grew up in Miami and started out of a garage and really followed the American dream and followed what his mom and dad said and said, you can do anything you want if you put your head to it because you live in the greatest country in the world. And those are the things that make me so happy and why I love the cigar industry so much and why I, I work harder than ever, even when I was a young guy, when I was 26 years old, when I stopped at 55 today, and I go out there and battle every day because I sincerely love it. And it's great when you go out to these retail stores, whether it's an event or a visit. I I go to the lounges. I talk to everybody in the lounges. I talk to the sales clerks, not just the owners, because everybody's important, just like everybody's essential. And nobody ever comes up to me and says, I'm going to a funeral today. I need a box of cigars. Everybody's happy to see you. And they, they you know, it's just, it's very pleasing. And I know you see the same thing when you go out there. Absolutely. So quick question, did you wear that suit today specifically to match that band? Because it looks very on brand between that suit and that band. I, I actually I actually did. And I, I, believe it or not, I got about two or three suits in the closet. So I, I just pulled this one out. And uh, Perfect. it's funny. I, 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 you know, I, I like suits. And I always have my, my 85-year-old mother, and I've said this a million times, but people always ask me why I wear a suit and tie when I go to their store. And I always say, my mom always said that when you go to church, you celebrate and honor God by wearing a suit and tie. And Nikki, when you go out in the field, I want you to wear a suit and tie because I want you to respect your consumers and your retailers. And when I do events, we'll put them up on Facebook and so on. And my mom will, will always text me. She'll say, Nikki, I didn't want to bother you, but I'm really proud of you. I'm watching you on Facebook right now. And you look so nice in your suit. You're honoring my wishes. And I never wanted to dishonor any of my mother's wishes. So hence why I wear suits and ties when I'm, 
when I'm when I'm out on the road working. It's it's a respect factor. And I'm old school. I'm an older guy, and I don't see anything wrong with that. So I'm proud that we do that. I do that. Yeah, you know, just a funny little anecdote on that one. We did an event here at the townhouse. Like I said, we do a lot of education for policymakers and their staffers. And our townhouse, where I'm at right now, is just you know five minute walk from the Capitol. So we do a lot of events here, and we had one with Michael Herklotz who came down from uh, New York, and we did it on Stalin cigars. And he's like, you know, whatever you're comfortable with and projecting, et cetera. And so to your point, right, you know, it's you grew up that way. Uh, I grew up similarly, right, you're going to church every way, you're at your Sunday best, et cetera. And that's how you're comfortable. And I'm, you know, I can be comfortable in a lot of different ways. But to your point, right, that's, that's, that's who you are. So there's no need to, to do it. And, and so, you know, Nicholas obviously is a little, a little bit different. And that's still okay, you know, as far as that's concerned. Um, there's a lot of questions about various aspects of cigars, but I did want to follow up on uh, a question there. Two questions, actually. Number one, uh, was the name of the champagne, uh, I love that name, by the way, because to your point, everything's celebratory when it comes to cigars. Was the the name champagne because of that connection to champagne? Is normally you're popping the champagne, you're celebrating. It's a happy time, or is there something else that was involved with that name? But I th I love how that connection is to. I'm gonna pop. I'm gonna pop open a champagne because I'm celebrating something. Well, back in the late '90s, early 2000s, uh, you know, we had my dad and my grandfather bought a lot of Connecticut uh, Connecticut shade wrappers, and uh, you know, we didn't at the time we were making a lot of cigars with Sumatra wrappers. Uh, Connecticut Broadleaf, uh, those type of, uh, of wrappers, and we didn't want to really use, we didn't really use Connecticut Shade wrappers, and one day, you know, my grandfather told my dad, hey, you know, you, you got a bunch of, you know, we have a bunch of this Connecticut Shade wrappers, and, you know, what are we going to do with them? My dad said, make some blends, and my grandfather, you know, we made, back in those days, all the Connecticut Shade wrapped cigars were, you know, with Dominican fillers, and it was, champagne was really probably the first Connecticut Shade wrapped cigar with, with Nicaraguan fillers, so my grandfather loved it. He said, you know, he told my dad, he said, Hey, this is, this is the champagne of rappers, you know, and, and it's stuck. And that's how we came out with Perdomo reserve, 10, Perdomo reserve 10th anniversary champagne. That's awesome. Yeah. That, yeah that, that's the store we call it champagne. The, the, the rappers, if you notice our rappers are more of a honey colored instead of that bright yellow. What we do is we, we mull them and we ferment them again and then we barrel age them and they, they darken up and they caramelize and really get the, the natural sweetness and the creaminess of that wrapper, you take that bitter edge off that that wrapper can be synonymous with sometimes. And believe it or not, that wrapper really accents really well with the fillers and binders that we came up with that particular dosage or blend of that cigar. And I remember when I came up with it, people said, Connecticut wrapper with Nicaraguan fillers and binders, that'll overpower the wrapper. And that was the secret when we started blending it is to be able to taste that those hints of, of creaminess that you get off those wrappers. And it's, you know, a lot of people say it's a beginning in cigar. It's actually a very rich cigar, but it's very smooth because of the curing and fermentation processes that we use and together with the barrel aging. But that's a cigar that can hit every gambit. And that's why it's been so successful, whether it's a guy who likes a mild to medium bodied cigar or a full bodied cigar. Because remember, a lot of a lot of beginners who start with cigars, you know, they drink, you know, big bourbons and big red wines and so on. And they like rich cigars. The thing about it is it's about making them smooth and flavorful and, and through good fermentation. I mean, I can put raw tobacco in there and make your eyes water, but that's not going to be successful. And it's not what's going to make you want to smoke a cigar time and time again. It's, it's no different than trying MD 2020 to a, to a Glenlivet 15. You know what I mean? There's a reason why they're different, you know, and, uh, that's why that's why we came up with the word champagne. It was my father's thing. He said this this wrapper's phenomenal. It works so well with these fillers and binders. It's really the champagne of wrappers. And just like Nicholas said, that's how we came up with that name. That's great. I love that because I always just assume, hey, celebration, champagne. Let's pop it open, right? So oh, yeah, yeah. A yeah. uh, couple of quick follow ups here. I uh, want to be respectful of, of the hour that we have, and uh, as we're coming up on it. But um, is there? I, I always like to ask this because you know you. Uh, you approach cigars from, I think, a different place than most people do. So I just kind of want to ask when, you know, there's obviously the ones that, that everybody knows and they, they smoke consistently. And I talk to a lot of manufacturers and they'll say, well, for this year or whatever else, we saw this particular line spike and then, whoops, sorry. And, and then it, it kind of trails off and it's not as popular as it was, or we see a, an intense focus that a lot of people want it right now. But other cigars from, you know, maybe a few years ago or whenever that were really popular that are things that, you know, maybe the public has not necessarily been smoking as much of again, because, it, you know, consumers, they do like testing new things and they like seeing what's coming out and that breeds excitement. But are there particular cigars of yours that might be, you know, favorites of yours 
that may not be as well known in your lines that you you know think that you know consumers should be continuing to pay attention to? Well, since we've merchandised, we haven't seen that so much. But I'll tell you two brands that kind of kind of puts a knife in my heart that should have been successful and they, they weren't, and it's really my fault because they weren't properly sold. And the first one was the Perdomo Patriarch that a lot of people love out there. But when you sell a box of Robustos and Toros and you get 10 inches of shelf space, none of those brands are ever going to sell, no matter how great the cigars were. And I take total fault of that. But that's a brand I want to bring back again because that was named in honor of my father and it was just sold incorrectly. And I take total responsibility of it. And the second one was a brand that we had called Perdomo Exhibition, which I know a lot of people out there really enjoy. It was the same thing. The box was too small. And it wasn't sold right with the amount of facings that should have where you where you have a, a showcase of cigars where people can visually see them. I would say those are the two brands that I think were, were real winners from the get-go that I failed on by not instructing um, my guys on how to sell it correctly. And it's not just about making a sale. And I think our mindset set changed eight years ago when we said, look, we're going to sell the products correctly. So the products can continue turning in the stores time and time again. And the guys that aren't going to follow the mantra, they're not going to be as successful, not as make, they're not going to make as much money as they could. Luckily, I would say nine out of 10 of our retailers around the world are following our merchandising. It's paying off not only for ourselves, but for them also. But, you know, any brands you see out there? No, I, I concur. I agree. Yeah, those are the two that, that, that pain me the most. Um, but we've been blessed because if you look, champagne on fire. 20th anniversary behind me on fire. Perdomo Habano Bourbon Barrel Age, really doing extremely well. Lot 23, phenomenal. 12-year um, double age 12 vintage. 12-year double age vintage. We're adding 50 more accounts on that. We're super happy with State the turnover ratio. Yeah, new estate selection vintage, box press. Hey, listen, we've got six or seven lines with five SKUs. We don't make a lot of SKUs. But yeah. when all three wrappers are moving – Hey, we got a lot. We got a lot to be thankful for. We're really blessed in that in that matter because we have a great portfolio of cigars that are working, and we think these two new cigars that are coming out now are going to make a lot of money for retailers. They're going to bring a lot of enjoyment to our consumers. That's great. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, can't wait to smoke those. Those both sound in ridiculously delicious. Um, I'll send you some. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, the uh, one question here from a, a retailer earlier, and I know this is not necessarily possible to answer too specifically. But, you know, high level, hypothetically speaking, for a retailer that's that's either just starting out or looking to bring in Perdomo, what are two or three lines you would recommend that they concentrate on bringing in for Perdomo to start selling them through through their stores? Um, I would recommend our Perdomo uh, first brand I would recommend is our Perdomo uh, 10th anniversary reserve champagne. Uh, that's our Coca-Cola, uh, our Diet Coke, which is our Perdomo Habano bourbon barrel age. Uh, that's another brand I would recommend third brand which is like our coke zero is our perdomo 20th anniversary and then our last the last brand i would recommend our top four core brands uh being the lot 23 the perdomo lot 23 um depending within those three wrappers outside of the champagne which comes in the connecticut shade uh you know those are the four core brands the whole thing is like going back to how my dad said selling selling our customers right you know giving telling us what the footprint is and we need to make sure that every square inch just like the grocery stores it, it's real estate it's prime real estate it needs to perform yeah we we sell everybody scott the same way whether it be a, a new retailer or a retailer 40 years we have a thing called a matrix and basically what we do is we study and analyze the brands that have the most turns and we bring it to them we show them how many turns each brand and each skew makes sometimes they want a skew and we tell them don't bring that skew in first because that skew is not as popular as what's coming in sales across the board and they become surprised sometimes we take back some and they, they say, don't you want my money? And I say, well, of course I do, but I want you to sell more. I want you to rotate through this product quicker and every square inch you're paying for humidity, electricity, lighting, and so on. And I want you to make money off that. And I want your consumers to, to I know what they like, you know, and I want them to get the cigars that they want. And that's going to be a win-win for not only us, but also for you and our consumers. And they get to see it. And it's not just about selling a product and throwing it on a shelf. It's selling a product and explaining to them how many turns they should be getting bi-weekly and per month and per quarter and per year. And then we analyze that with our, with, with our team. And our team comes a lot of times at the year end and shows them 
how the matrix worked for them. Because a lot of times they don't see it and they say, wow, I didn't know I did. This is what you did. And we show them everything. We have a, a great program for Microsoft where we go in and, and we show them this. And this is what the future teaches us and what it brings in where yeah. we need to give the best information to our retailers and we're doing it. Yeah. And what's really interesting is that a lot of retailers, when we you know surveyed members and talked to them, one of the things that they appreciate the most, number one, they the product education is is the, the thing that they look after most, but just slightly under that then is the relationship with the manufacturer. And to that point is, is that that partnership, uh, when, when it's, when it's, you know, hand in glove and working well, it's that type of infrastructure information that you have that can really help a small retailer grow that business. Right. And to your point, I think that across the board, all the retailers that I talk to, they talk about that support that you provide them because they know that you have their best interest at heart, that it isn't just about, hey, I need to unload 10 boxes. So I'm going to go sell you whatever it is that you're going to buy at this point. You're really invested into their success. And you have the infrastructure there in your business to be able to utilize those tools and leverage them for those retailers to then be successful and grow. Because you know, of course, the better that they do, the better it is that Perdomo cigars are going to do as well. And that's why I think that that symbiotic relationship is so important between manufacturer and retailer for that very reason. Absolutely. My, at my stage of my career, I tell mm -hmm. my son this all the time. The only thing I care about, I've been doing this for a lot of years. It's going to be three decades. I want my retailers to be happy and be confident of every brand that they sell from Perdomo. They know it's going to burn perfectly. It's going to be constructed perfectly. It's going to draw perfectly. And I want our consumers to be just equally as confident when they buy a Perdomo cigar and see its quality. I said, that's all we work for today. We've, we've, we've been hit with every sledgehammer you can across the shins and across the head. Now it's our time to shine and make sure that we help our retailers and, and really assist our consumers in providing the best. That's all we care about. I'm getting old, man. I'm losing all my hair. This is this is all I care about now. You know, I'm, I'm riding into the sunset here. I'm, I'm going to set this off to the younger, younger folk here in the coming years. So um, I want to leave that trail as smooth as possible. And every day we have a we have a big thing in the factory basically saying that our quality is the respect to our, our consumers and to our retailers. And we have to work every day to make sure that we satisfy that. And having a team that's been with me on average for 19.4 years and having over 790 employees uh, re, uh, retire from our company shows our longevity and the and the care that we take for our, for our consumers. And that's what I'm, I think I'm most proud of right now. Uh, that's amazing. You know, you can't go ahead and go au natural like like uh, I do, and, and it's more, more aerodynamic, but I don't know if you quite want to go there yet. I'm, I'm getting it on the backside. The front side's doing okay, but the backside's getting a little short there. Who knows? It's just a solar <laughs> panel, right? It's just a new way to get energy is what, you know. Yeah, but uh, hey, listen, uh, that's the new look. People like that. You look all right. Yeah, I've been this way for quite some time, so I'm going to say that they're copying me at this point. Uh, I, this is the last piece I want to uh, end on here because this is one thing that I, I, I love underscoring about the industry. And uh, there's an example here that I would like to illustrate here in a second. But the premium cigar industry is so unbelievable in how much it gives back to the, their communities and, and the focus on charities and reaching out and, and helping others. And there's a comment here that I just want to highlight. And I just kind of like get your comments on this as sort of the last thoughts. But you know, thank you, Nick Perdomo and Nicholas, for the informative Facebook session. I'm so excited about the 10th anniversary. And, and so, oh, sorry, I think I clicked on the, the wrong one, but that's a good prop there for you. Sorry, there's so many comments coming in. I'm trying to keep up with them, but it's um, it's up here. I'm going to get to it here, but it's about the box of cigars. That you, here it is from Tim Hahn. Sorry I missed that one, but it was a, still a good comment about how good your cigars are. Uh, but it's a big thank you to you for donating cigars for that they raffled this year for the Memorial Ride and Poker Run in honor of our son, Kyle Hahn. God bless you and your wonderful family. Um, I just kind of wanted to get, you know, just a last take on that focus. Uh, you know, you've talked so much about your family, so much about caring for your business and, and the, the premium cigar industry as a whole. Uh, but it's a lot bigger than that. And the premium cigar industry really has always been bigger than itself in terms of its looking out to help people in their communities and just kind of wanted to get your comments and perspective on that. Cause I know that you've done a lot of work in that area. Well, first of all, thank you, Tim. It was my pleasure. I know it well. Thank you. Jeff Stoop who's a great retailer in Texas. He's always been supportive of us. Look, I was in the military. I, I served my country for five years and during desert storm, you know, my dad always said, when you give to charity, if you have to promote it, you're not really giving to charity, but I will tell you, um, Keith Meyer, he used to own cigars international myself donated, 
a tremendous amount of cigars for our troops. And one of the greatest things that I get is, you can't see it here, but all the pictures of, of military guys who were, who were smoking our cigars, whether it be in Afghanistan, Iraq, um, Somalia, in different places, and seeing the enjoyment because these guys can't drink, they can't have a woman. Exactly. Yeah, all they can have is coffee and cigars. It was my honor and my privilege to be able to do that. And not only myself, but a lot of cigar members, uh, manufacturers, um, we give to charities. But my wife's a philanthropist. We do a lot for children's causes, and we do it because it's from our hearts. We really, I really don't like to talk about it, to be quite honest with you, because you do it from your heart. But I will tell you that the cigar community is extremely generous. And, um, you know, listen, we've been in Nicaragua for 25 years. We've done a lot for the communities over there. Um, and the retailers, a lot of the retailers have been down to the factory, know what we've done. And I'll leave it at that. But I'm proud that I'm blessed that, I'm, that we can be able to help. And I, I know my son is going to continue in that. I know our, 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 our company believes in that. And, you know, you have to give back because uh, God's been very good to us. And we feel that, you know, it's a two way street and you, you got to give back. And to all the consumers out there, I ask you one thing. And I did a little video about this, but please support your brick and mortar stores. Um, you know, when I was a drummer, I remember it'd be seven o'clock at night. I was talking to a friend of mine at Pearl who mentioned something that happened to me and I needed a pair of drumsticks. And I called this lot, local mom and pop music store. Unfortunately, no longer business. And I know I'm running late, but I really need a set of drumsticks to play tonight. And the guy said, I'll stay open. He stayed open for 22 minutes after seven. I got my drumsticks, four bucks. He probably made a buck off of them. And I'll never forget that. And remember that, that these guys work really hard. They have lots of expenses. Um, you, you use their lounges, you drink their coffee, you use their electricity, uh, support them now more than ever. Um, they've had, a, they've had a tough, 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 top, uh, a couple months. And, um, we really need to support everybody. And as Americans, let, let's support all our restaurants, our cigar shops and everything out there. These guys have struggled and, uh, I hope I hope I hope people listen and adhere to that. So. Yeah, amen to all of that. You know, as as uh, work for the association, I work for the the retailers and manufacturers. Underscore all of that and how important the retailers really are. It, it the the ripple effects that 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 has throughout the community is massive, right? Um, and and I know that, that again. I know that you didn't like to talk about too much about the charity, but you know, the, those of us do need to to be able to to call attention to some of those things because. Uh, again, larger community is important, but also you know, people do want to say thank you for the, for what you do um, in, in that regard too. Um, and I do just want to uh, mention Dustin Hayden's comment here. He says, "Bald is beautiful." I concur, Dustin. Uh, just any kind of closing remarks. Thank you so much for even spending a few minutes past the hour with us. Um, again, oh thank, thank you both for for coming on and doing this. And and uh, I am terribly excited and and so jazzed by the fact that we get to announce those two cigars here on this show and first time it's been seen. Um, and so we'll definitely make sure we promote that and push that out. And so anybody who's listening right now, make sure you let them know that this is where they can come to see the two new releases from Perdomo Cigars and that, that this summer they're going to be shipping out. So look for those, go get them and enjoy them because we all know that they're going to be absolutely phenomenal and that you're going to love them. Um, so Nick, Nicholas, thank you both so much for joining me today. All of my best to your family. Hope everybody there at the Perdomo family and at the company is doing well. And I look forward to seeing you guys very, very soon. Hopefully it's before uh, the, the factory tour in January, February timeframe, but I'm already going to mark that on my calendar as if it's a done deal, but uh, look forward to seeing you guys soon. Likewise and best to everybody and you too, Scott and your family and everybody out there and their families. Thank you for everything. And thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you everybody for joining us and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys. Have a great afternoon. Thanks a lot. Take care. Still.